Okay, today we're going to show you the full process on how to render a wall. But we're going to show you the simplest way to get there and show you some big hurdles you need to avoid while showing you a best system on how to get effective results, even if you're brand new to rendering. Now this is a job we're working on. I've had a few areas scratched before, but all the patio slabs are down. So this is area I prepped beforehand. Now, the first rule is to make sure you really soak up your walls. Now, an early, hour earlier it did rain. <laughs> but even with that in mind, you've got to make sure that you're really soaking your walls before you do it. And what I recommend is you spray your walls down first and then you start mixing. Now, we'll talk about the render mix later on um, and potentially talk about the best materials to use. Now, I'm using just standard sand cement on this job, but I must admit, there are better options and we'll speak about that later on. Now, the main rule, another good rule of thumb is when you're applying the render, apply lots of pressure behind the trowel. Now, you will drop a bit. <laughs> I've just dropped a shed load there, but make sure all your floors covered up, everything's protected underneath because render, as, as well as it being a tough product to scoop up, it is just, it can be quite corrosive. So make sure you correct and cover up all the areas that you're working over. But again, the main rule of thumb when you're applying the render is lots of pressure, but don't try and get it dead flat. You don't want to be playing with the render, you don't want to be constantly troweling it off because what you'll start getting is you'll start to pull the um, moisture from the back of the render, pulling it to the front, which weakens the product. So you want to apply it and then leave it. So don't be too pedantic. Put a lot of pressure, make sure you're troweling it into the scratch, but don't overwork it. Now this is when we start ruling. This is a long 1.8 meter straight edge and a good rule of thumb is to find the biggest rule you can for the beginning. What you need to do is find an overall gauge on where all your high spots and low spots are. Now even though it would be easier for me to jump straight to a smaller rule here because of all these steps and the different slabs that are in the way, you've got to get an overall gauge on where you're all sitting. So the bigger the rule you can use at the beginning, the better, because then you can work off a general rule of thumb knowing that the bigger the rule, the flatter the area is going to be. If you just work with a small rule from the beginning, then you won't get a true gauge on how flat your wall really is. So what I've got is 1.8 meters, like I said. And then what I'm going to do after this, I'm going to shrink it down and use a smaller straight edge. Now, this is a 1.2 meter derby. A lot easier for the job now, as you can see, because you can get in and around the, the slabs, so you can work around it. But like I said, we need to get an overall gauge first on how flat the wall is. Once you've done that, we can then start to fine tune the wall, make sure we're getting all the areas filled. Now look at this, by the way, massive stone. Talking about sand cement mix, this is supposed to be good sand. It's full of stones, full of big fat pebbles. <laughs> So again, we'll talk about better options for the mix later on, but that's later on's task. Um, but here we are. What I'm going to do is fill in the areas of uh, load off. Again, using a 1.2 meter rule. We're really going to fine tune this area and get it dead flat. Um, so again, make sure you're holding. It. This is a, a derby, so you've got handles on it. Now it's up to you what you use. I like to use a feather edge, but I've really got into using a derby because your handles there, uh, your hands are far away from the render it's quite easy to rule, quite easy to use. But don't be scared to use your trowel as well. If there's little areas around the slabs, don't be scared to use that. Anything that's flat is going to give you a good gauge on how to get it. Now, once you've got a general thickness, what you want to do is fill any low spots. What you'll find when you are rendering, you would have pulled off some areas and there'll be some areas missing. So just fill them in. But here's the big secret when you're ruling. Now, we've got the general general flatness so as you can see i've got a slight angle on my derby there now what i want to do is hold the derby at a 90 degree angle this is when you're going to get your walls dead flat so for the final ruling off the final time make sure whatever you're using feather edge derby make sure you're holding it as close to 90 degree angle as you can and this means you're going to get a flat wall overall and that's how you're going to get your true flatness holding the derby feather edge at that angle so once you've got it flattened off now the big rule of thumb, and this is probably one of the most important sections, is learning to wait. Yep, waiting is just as important as doing action. Now I couldn't wait because I'm self-employed. <laughs> I had to jump on and start doing other bits. But what you can't do is you can't let the render dry too much. You need to be on it, you need to be touch testing it, making sure that it's not too set. Um, so what we're really looking for 
and we are about to jump back onto the render is once you've given it time that when you put your fingers into it you're not going to leave any indentations you need the render to be pretty solid not bone dry that's the last thing you want but you need it to be pretty solid now this is the best float I recommend to anyone this is the Rafina diamond float it's an unbelievable bit of kit this is brand new I brought my last one and last rendering job unfortunately but these floats are unbelievable. Get rid of your poly floats, throw them in the bin. <laughs> These are absolute game changers. Um, and Rafina generally just make amazing rendering floats. I think they are the best floats on the market actually. Whatever they do is just gold. Their di uh, power floats, which I'll talk about in another video, they're brilliant. But for hand floats, I definitely recommend this. And when you are floating, keep the float flat to the wall, but don't be scared to spray a bit of water on there. You can see that really livens the render up. Can you see it's getting a bit fatty again? That's what you want when you're uh, when you're floating up. You need a bit of that fat floating to the surface. So you need a bit of a creaminess, and that's going to close all the pores together and make sure that we're really starting to get a smooth flat wall. So don't be scared to spray a bit of water on there, but at the same time, when you're floating, make sure it's not soaking wet. You need to have that firmness. So when we did that touch test before, that's what we're looking for. Putting your fingers in and making sure that you've got a nice, stable, solid wall now you're going to get low spots just scoop up a bit of the remaining render from when you applied it and here's a good rule of thumb don't add any water use the leftover render but have it as it is you want it to be quite thick you want it to be quite firm if you use wet render it's just going to liven up the whole wall it'd be a nightmare to work with so what i recommend is use the leftover render from your old mix and don't do anything to it. Use it as is. So even if it's been a few hours, that render's gonna be a bit firm, but at least it's gonna be the same firmness as the render on the wall. It can work well together, and when you're floating it in, it's not gonna to be too lively. Now, this is an old little float. Make sure you've got two floats on the go. I've cut one down, this float I brought all the way back from New Zealand with me. It's a tiny little baby, ideal for these little steps here. So make sure you've got a few floats on the go, one that you're breaking in, one that is broken in, one that you've cut down to size, and one that's just on its way out. And when you are floating on lower sections, you don't always need to use beads by the way, look, we can, what I'm doing here is, they've got a baby, they're going to have in the bottom and this is the bottom end of the garden. What you want to do on lower details wall like this, is you, if you're not using beads, just create a little chamfer, and all I do is we literally just slide up and across from the um, archway and that's going to give you a nice little curve so don't always think you need to use beads when you're rendering because you don't you can form angles um, and you know we'll talk about that in other videos but that is something that you can consider you don't always need to have beads when rendering now here's the final bit the sponging it's probably the easiest part of the process but the biggest advice I can give you damp sponge not wet we want the sponge to be damp not soaking wet so all we're doing is gently holding the sponge. This is just a jumbo car sponge. You don't need anything important, but constantly clean it. Make sure there's none of that sand sticking, sticking in the pores and drench all the water out of that and then give it a good, good tap. Once you tap it, you're gonna leave the rest of that remaining water behind and then gentle touch, uh, anti-clockwise motions. All we're doing is bringing the aggregate to the surface. But like I said, very gentle touch damp not wet if the sponge is wet you're going to just liven up the render and you're just going to make an almost you're going to see the swirls you're going to make it too too lively to get a nice smooth finish all we want to do here is just bring the sand to the surface we're not trying to do anything else other than that so make sure it's not soaking wet gentle touch little clock anti-clockwise motions and we're really bringing that texture to the front as you can see it's closing off the pores and leaving a lo lovely, lovely nice finish. Um, so that is the best ways on how to get your rendered wall looking banging. Now here's the end result. That's the steps done and that's that. Now one of the things we haven't spoken about and probably the most important parts of rendering is the mix. What product to use? Now I'll be it, and I'm honest with you, I think sand cement is dead. This product in this video is the best render any beginner, any renderer, anyone should be using. It's pre-mixed, it's pre-made, and I'll show you in this video why this is the best thing you should be using in rendering, and probably the main reason why you should put standard sand cement, throw it away and get rid of it completely. Watch this here and show you the best ways to get results with a new class rendering system.